1045 The Beat, Off The Beat interview, inside a men's closet, east side location, here with T Grizzly. What's up, what's up, what's up? With no F. 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 I can do this with no effort. You know I do this with no effort. I can do this with no effort. None. Shoes took a house, I took your took that all the time. Play my role so good after I hit, I took a ball. Take some power for a power. Take your time, take it serious. I'm curious. Should I buy me? All right, so you have this mixtape out called My Moment. Right. And it pretty much goes uh, to say that you are having your moment. This is definitely your moment, fitting. Right. right. <laughs> um, so I read somewhere that you said that you expected First Day Out to do maybe like 20,000 plays of views in the first, month. like what, week, month? First month, yeah. And the first week it did, two weeks it did what, a million? No, it did two million in two weeks. Two million. And I checked the video this morning, it's at like 38 million. So yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. My question to you is because I know <laughs> a lot of artists probably want to know this, like, how was First Day Out able to go so viral so fast? I feel like the best thing I can say about it is my story is so relatable. Either somebody that's been through what I've been through or know somebody that's been through it. So it's going to touch bases or hit home with a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? But I can't say that's it because there's some other stuff that went viral that ain't real. You know what I'm saying? So. I don't know. If I had the formula, I'd do it every time. Right. So there was, it, it's completely organic. All the views that you got from it, all the right. replays, the listens, completely just, nobody like massively retweeted it and it just went wild. Like it just completely organically yeah. just got that many views. Yeah. Now, you wrote it while you were locked up in prison. Um, you said that you wrote it while you were sitting in your bunk. Right. What was the energy like as you were writing that? Because I noticed that when you write, you don't write to any beats. You just write. Yeah, just You're like a writer so. first. Right. So what was the energy like as you were writing it? I mean, it was like it was like how I write any other one. It's just be like I'll be chilling and something just hit me. I don't never force it when I write. You know, you can't force mm -hmm. or rush creativity. So ain't nobody really know about the case I caught. So while I'm writing, I'm just trying to inform people on what happened and how I ended up in here and all this and that. Mm -hmm. So that's what it was. Like a little bit more into that, something I think that's so cool about you that I was watching in another interview is that you actually write your songs and then you find a, um, a beat or instrumental or producer to create basically a beat around your song. Right. How do you know when you found the beat? Like, how do you know when you found, like, that's the one that your producer decided? Do y'all collab? Is it all you? How do you know? Cause like, for, for example, right, day ones or how many, I write them songs with a certain rhythm and certain beat already in my head. And once the producer make the beat, if it sound like it's going in a different direction, once the beat is made, I know that ain't it. It got to be the exact same way. I got to be able to say it. Yeah. You heard in your head. It got to be the same speed. I got to be able to say it the same way I wrote it, or it ain't it. Now, while you were in there, you said that you were reading a lot of books, and that's why now, like when you go through like your social media feed, you actually read through almost everybody's messages to you. What book would you say was the most influential to you in there, and why? Um. It's two of them, let me remember the other one. One book is called The Shack. It's like a religious book, but it ain't, it ain't the typical religious book. It's like, it enlightened me on a whole lot. You know, it's a Christian book, but it ain't your average. It don't say the same stuff, mm -hmm. it's different. That's one of them. Why would you say that one was one of the most important ones or what most memorable to you? Because it's like, before I read the book, like I said, it's a religious book, right? Before I read that book, if somebody would have asked me, like, do you love God? I would have said, yeah, because that's the right thing to say. Or I feel like I'm supposed to say it. After I read that book, I can really genuinely say I love him. Mm -hmm. I can really genuinely say I know that he loved me after reading that book. Around that time, would you say that you also wrote Testimony? Because I know that that's a track where it's almost like you have a personal conversation with God. No, I wrote Testimony when I first first went in. I feel like I needed, I feel like I needed a song that catered to him. Cause I got songs for everything else. I need one to cater to. You know. Another book that um, it was a book called How to Buy Houses with No and Low Money Down. It's a look. It's a real estate book, right? Mm -hmm. But the game that they giving you, you can apply it to all different parts of life. Like they telling you how to hustle, basically. Mm -hmm. But they saying it in real estate, but you can apply it to anything you want to. When we're done with this, I want you to write that name of that book down, and uh, I think we all can benefit from that book. <laughs> For sure. 
So, you know, on first day out, you say how your first offer was 30 years. Mm -hmm. Other than, I guess, like the grace of God, mm -hmm. you did play a part in actually being your case yourself, right? Right. You read up on some stuff, right? Right. I read, I had, uh, I had people from outside sending me law and sending me cases that were similar to the case that I caught. And people that did more than what I did got less time than what they were trying to give me. So I knew, I knew something was wrong right then and there. So was there one specific thing that you like, that you found that was able to, I guess, clear your case? The thing that got me out of it, right? And it's the only thing that got me out of it. I had a sledgehammer when I ran in the jury stuff. And they tried to charge me with armed robbery because the sledgehammer, they said it was a weapon. When I read in the law book, it's two things that can only be considered as a weapon. A deadly weapon and a dangerous instrument. A deadly weapon is something that's just used to threaten or harm somebody. A dangerous instrument is something that had a purpose in a crime and then is used to harm, threaten somebody. The sledgehammer I used, it had a purpose, which was to break the glass. And after I broke that glass, I had no more use for it. I ain't threaten nobody with it, I ain't lift it up. I never, nobody was ever in harm's way with it. Because after I broke the glass, I dropped the hammer. So. But that was on your case when you charge it? Yeah. Got it. But they couldn't label that as a weapon. So that's what got me out of it. Now, I seen where you had said that um, your next project is seen to have some more West Coast beats and South um, South beats. Yeah. What can we expect from the next project coming out? The next project, the first project was my story. The struggles, the prison, and coming out and seeing people's true colors. This story on my album is going to be the same, my life, but in a different aspect, how I feel to come from nothing and experience what I'm experiencing now. How I feel to be overwhelmed by having your freedom back after years on top of getting all type of love from the music. It's just, I'm telling my story, this is a different chapter in my life. You know, First Day Out is like such a strong record to come out with. And like I said, I can't relate to probably anything that you're talking about your song, but that song does something to my soul. And when I'm in the club, it, it's that song yeah, cause, for me. Because it's real. It is real. So my last question to you is like, how important do you feel like your voice is right now for the current state of hip hop? I feel like it's important because, like I say, it's a lot of people that have been through what I've been through, or they know somebody that's been through it. And I don't feel like it's nobody that's telling the story like that and still making it interesting. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know no song you could play in the club that's a autobiography and still can get people to turn up. Right, with no hook, no chords, yeah. just going in. So I feel like, I feel like it's important that I, that I keep putting it out there, that creativity. Nice. Well, there you have it for me at least. DJ MK, T Grizzly, Inside Men's Closet. Joy Rogues, if with the money long as six mile, brick mile, knock your pop down, pick her up, knock her back down, pull her tracks out. Yes, I slap girl. Yes, I slap dog. Yes, I slap loud. Yes, I slap a in your suit if he act out. Yes, I caught cases on the road with them killers, bro. Kill me if I snitch, cause if you snitch, I'm gonna kill you. Spent a lot of time on the yard with them gorillas. Stood tall. Did I let against told me quit being silly? I know four vacuum get wet for in the cause I do it better. Plus I'm doing better again this I'm at home.